One of the most important keys to a healthy marriage is to understand that marriage is not a contract, but a covenant. Now, let me share with you three things about covenant. Number one, covenant begins on the basis of trust and not distrust. Now, contracts are often made out of a sense of distrust. And that is why two parties need to get, have their own lawyers draw up a written contract and get the other party to sign on a dotted line. Why? Just in case the other party plays them out. The starting point you will notice is not trust, but distrust. But the marriage is not a contract based on distrust, but it is really a covenant that is based on mutual trust. The couple is literally committing themselves to build a relationship of mutual trust. So they are saying to each other, in essence, I will trust you. And the best way to build trust is to practice open communication. The, the, more, the more lines of communication we have in our, in our marriage, the less likely will there be room for distrust to creep in. Now, the picture I can give you will be that of reinforcement bars in a concrete beam. Now, if your marriage is the concrete beam, then the lines of communication are like the reinforcement bars that you put into the beam. The more bars you have, the stronger the beam will become. The more lines of open communication we have, the stronger our marriage will be. So in marriages, we tend to fall into this attitude, you know, the person I love should know instinctively what I need. So oftentimes you find that the wife is unhappy about something and the husband is not even aware. And by the time he finds out, she is already fuming mad. And the husband will always ask, why didn't you tell me? And the wife's response will be, you should know what. If I have to ask for it, it's meaningless already. You should know, you should know. It's like the national anthem of marriage. Well, the truth is this, love is not mind reading, but love means communicating. So if you want a mind reader for your spouse, then you better marry a psychic. But communication is what builds trust. So we must take time, make time, schedule time to sit down and talk to each other. Sit up and listen to each other. In short, we must communicate. Now remember, talking is sharing. Listening is caring. Only then will the covenant of your marriage be sustained in an atmosphere of trust. That's number one, build trust. Here's number two. Covenant is focused on responsibilities and not rights. A covenant relationship is one that is focused on giving and not just receiving. A covenant relationship is one where two parties are really focused on their responsibilities rather than focusing on their rights. So the husband's responsibility is to love his wife and do all that love would require him to. The wife's responsibility is to submit and honour her husband and do all that would be required of her to do so. Now, anytime you find yourself focusing on and fighting for your rights, you can be pretty sure that you are heading towards dangerous ground. The problem is that most people tend to enter marriage on a 50%, 50% basis. What do I mean by that? The attitude is this. If you put in your share of 50%, then I will put in my share. So the wife's attitude is often this. If you show yourself worthy of my respect and my honour, then I will do it. If you love me first, then I will submit to you. If not, go fly a kite or take a hike. The husband, in the meantime, will be saying, you must submit to me. I'm the boss, you know. You act like a tiger. How can I love you? And the two shall never meet. It's a deadlock situation. What is happening here is this. Both parties are now focusing on their rights rather than their responsibilities. I want you to know that the Bible never focuses on rights. It always focuses on responsibility. See, marriage is not a contract based on 50%, 50%. But marriage is a covenant, 100%, 100%. Our attitude should be, I will do my part even if he or she does not because I am doing it as unto the Lord. Here's number three. Covenant is long-term, not short-term. Whereas contracts can be broken with the mutual consent of both parties, covenant cannot be broken. 
the marriage covenant is a lifelong commitment. The vows that you, you took reads like this, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness or in health, till death do us part. True love ultimately boils down to one word, commitment. The romantic feelings during courtship is wonderful. In fact, I would advocate that you should maintain it till the end. But the problem with us is that we have this wrong idea that love is conquering rather than being conquered. See, when you finally get the woman of your dream, you did not conquer her, but you were being conquered by her. See, our problem is that we have these three R's in life, you know. Age 25 is romance. Age 45, remuneration. Age 65, rheumatism. You know? But without romance, marriage can get boring. But having said that, we need to remember that marriage is ultimately not based on a feeling, but it is a commitment based on a covenant. See, sometimes we think that the relationship can only grow if we feel good about each other. No, I think growth comes from working through those times when we don't feel good about each other. There's this silly pop song that goes like this, Loving you is easy because you're so beautiful. Of course, it is easy when she's shaped like a guitar, but five years and three kids later, she's shaped more like a pear. Then it is commitment and not feelings that will form the foundation of our love. It is the same with the man, right? We start out V-shaped, but five years later, we all become A-shaped. And our wives still deeply love us, deeply committed to us. Now, that's covenant. And listen, we don't do nice things because we feel romantic, but we will feel romantic when we do nice things for each other. This is living by commitment and not feelings. Christian marriage is not a contract, it's a covenant a covenant that is based on trust and not distrust, responsibilities and not rights, commitment and not feelings. The Christian marriage is not just a covenant made between two parties, but really three, because God is the third party in this covenant. And if we allow God to be in the centre of our marriage, then He promised that everything, when everything else fails, His grace will see us through. And when you should reach the end of your line, the limits of your patience, the peak of your dissatisfaction, His grace will be sufficient for you. And I want you to know that God has also made a covenant of love with all of us 2,000 years ago. It was a covenant that He sealed with His own blood. It is a covenant of His everlasting love for us. And that covenant can best be expressed in John 3.16 where the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to know that God will never break His covenant with us. And that is why no matter how far you and I can stray away from Him, there, can, there will always be that still small voice that says to us, My son, my daughter, I love you and I want you to come home. And that's covenant relationship. And I'm so glad that God didn't make a contract with us, but He made a covenant with us. And that is why I'm a man full of hope for the future. And my prayer for you is that you too will experience this same hope. May God's greatest blessing be upon you and your family. Amen.